Hello everybody, Keith Tanner here from Flying Miata, and I'm here to show off a cool tool that we've got. It's for pulling valve stems, or valve, uh, taking valve systems apart. It's for pulling valve springs out uh, with the engine, or with the head on the car, or without the head on the car. Uh, it's a difficult job to do, and this makes it a little bit easier. So, why would you want to pull off your valve springs? Well, one, you might want to change your valve springs for something a little more exotic. Um, and they also, if you're having trouble with oil consumption or oil smoke, that can be your valve stem seals. I'll show you what we're dealing with here. This is, this one's been pulled off, don't mind the, the damage to the paint. But this is basically a little hat that sits on top of your valve guide that keeps oil from dripping down into the valve, getting into the combustion chamber, and turning up a smoke. You'll know you have bad valve stem seals if you have smoke on deceleration or at idle. Basically, whenever you're pulling vacuum, it'll suck oil past the seal. If you're getting oil on acceleration, um, basically when, you're, when you've got the throttle open, that's more of a, of a ring problem. We're mostly looking at the seals today. So this is the sort of thing, if you're idling for a while, it starts smoking. If it smokes every time you let off the gas on deceleration, it's these seals. We have found that the aftermarket version of these seals are not very good. Um, if you're going to put putting these seals in, use the actual Mazda ones. It's not worth the effort of saving a few bucks to put in the cheap ones. Even if your valve, if your head kit comes with a set of, uh, of seals, if they're not Mazda ones, don't use them. It's just simply not worth it. So what we're going to do is we need to get into this little guy, or if we want to change out our valve springs, now's our opportunity to change our valve springs. And the way we're going to do that, I'll show you how this is held together. This is obviously inside the head. And then you have the valve spring on top of that. And the valve spring is held in with this retainer and these two little keepers. They're wedge shaped and they simply go over, they clip onto the top of the valve like that. There we go. And then when the spring is released, this is under tension all the time. Because they're wedge shaped, they're held in place. It's that simple. Simple little thing. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna compress the spring we're going to pull out these retainers, and then we'll pull the spring off. Sounds easy. So, first, you can do this with the head on the car, or, you, or on the engine, or you can do it with the head on the bench. If the head's on the engine, you've got to do something to support the valves. You can't simply take the valve spring off, take the keepers off and everything, because then the valve will fall down into the cylinder, and you're taking the head off anyway at that point. So, if you are doing this with the head on the engine, uh, there's two, two easy ways or two, two common ways to support the valve. One is you can use a leak down tester to basically put about 100 PSI of pressure in the cylinder. So just hook it up to an air supply and that will be enough to happily keep the valve up uh, in place. The other way you can do it, and this seems a little weird but it works, is just feed some rope down in there or some you know thick string, pair of trooper cords, something like that. Make sure you've got the end loose, but uh, just keep packing it in there until the cylinder is full and that will support the valve, that will keep the valve from falling down. Um, and again, don't push it all in there otherwise you won't be able to get it out, but if you leave the end on you can just pull it out when you're done. It seems ridiculous, but it works. And that's actually what I'm doing when it's on the, on the bench like this, I've actually got one of the cylinders filled up with string just because it makes it that much easier to support the valve while I'm doing this. So, one of the things we have to do as part of this is take the cam off because everything's underneath the cam. So if you're going to do a time belt change, if you're going to do a new water pump, if you're going to do new cam seals, it's the time to do that because you're going to have the whole front of the engine torn apart if this was on an engine. So we'll start by taking off the cam. When you take off the cam, there's a couple of things to know. These cam caps are all numbered. You can see they're stamped in here. Uh, this is intake 2, I3, I4, I5 and they've got an arrow pointing towards the front of the engine so you know which way they go. This is important because these are put on the head and then line board with a very, very precise bore. So you don't want to get these mixed up and you want to keep them the right way around. Mazda's production methods are close enough. You can probably get away with mixing them up, but there's no good reason to do so when they've marked everything for you. So I will admit I loosened these up earlier. These will, uh, these will pop off. When you're loosening off a cam, you're going to want to do it starting at the middle, kind of like a valve cover, starting at the middle and working your way out so that you don't put a lot of stress on one side of the cam and not the other. Because um, this thing is under pressure from the valve springs. And if you loosen off everything at this end and leave it locked down to this end, it's a lot of stress on the camshaft. You know, it's one of those legends say that you can damage your camshaft. I don't know if you actually can, but Mazda says, take them off 
in a sort of spiral pattern like this. There's no reason not to, once again. It's, uh, it's simply good practice. And you're gonna find when you take these off that most of them, the cam doesn't just pop off anyway. You'll see this in a moment. I didn't get those out all the way, did I? One more time with the magic T-bar here. If you have any questions about what I'm doing, go ahead and ask them. I will do my best to answer them. Okay, now these little cam caps are a press fit on here. They're going into a little sleeve, so they're not gonna just lift off. You're probably gonna have to tap them with a soft face hammer. You see the cam jump there? There we go. Come on, how'd you come? There we go. So again, you can see it better on this one. See that E2? This is exhaust number two, and that arrow goes towards the front, so pay attention to that. Keep everything in the right order. It'll make your life so much easier later on. There we go. See, there's those little sleeves that are holding everything in place. They're a very, very tight fit on there. So these things are kind of wedged in. It's not a place where you want any movement. Out comes the camshaft. And you can choose to put that same camshaft back in or you can choose not to. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull out one of these, uh, one of these valve springs, shall we? So the kit comes with, this is the bulk of it, and this is designed for the BP, the B series engine. So it'll fit the 1.6 and the 1.8 NA and NB heads. Um, all of them, uh, basically anything that's BP based. So there's gonna be a bunch of Escort GTs can use this, there's Kias that can use this. Um, it does not fit some of the other Mazda engine variants at the moment, but at the moment that's the case. Uh, they also come, it also comes with this special bolt comes with some extreme pressure lubrication, this funky little hat, and a super screwdriver. Now this screwdriver is actually important. You're gonna use this because it's got a magnet on one end. And the easy way to get the um, lifters out, pick them up with a magnet. It's one of those things, you go nuts trying to pull them out with pliers, you'll damage something, but with a magnet, super easy every time. Let's get, put that one back in there, I don't need to take it off. So, let's take a peek down there. You can see Hopefully you can see, I'll get you a little light on there. There we go, there are my two keepers. Those are the two guys I need to get out. So we're gonna push down on the, uh, on the valve, on the spring top, and then get these two little keepers out of there. I've seen a tool that actually makes this super easy. It's basically a tube with a couple of magnets inside. You put the tube on there, hit it with a hammer, it momentarily compresses the spring, the magnet pulls these two guys out, and then, uh, and then it all relaxes again. Um, great tool if you have it, very special use, but we'll show you how to do this without that tool. Because the tool doesn't help you put them back in again, which is part of the fun. We had someone ask if these tools are actually for sale on our site. They are for sale on our site, thank you for asking. Um, they are a uh, valve spring removal tool, I think is what they're called. Uh, they are $74.99, including shipping inside the US. And it's one of those tools that if you need one, you really need one. Um, it's very, it's almost impossible to do this job without some way to, to compress the valve springs. Um, it is impossible to do this job without some way to compress the valve springs. And if you've got an engine that's smoking a little bit at uh, an overrun and at idle, this is an easy way to fix that problem without having to go to the trouble of tearing an engine down. So I put our special little compressor hat in there and I'm gonna take some of this extreme pressure grease just lube up, the, lube up the threads, no point in tearing our nice little tool apart. Make sure you get this seated in properly. It's, a, it's a, quite an angle, so you wanna make sure you get that right. So I'll just start this until I start feeling some pressure. That's a 14 millimeter head. Proper, proper uh, metric size, of course. Come on, there you go. You could probably use an impact gun for this. I like using a wrench because you're not a little way to go. Um, you're not putting a lot of pressure on this and it gives you better control. So here we go, it's starting to compress and they look like they're about out. Now I like to take a little poking device and just pop them out of place. 
lets me know when I'm far enough down. I'm not quite there yet. You had a close up of a wrench right there, didn't you? And now we use our special magnetic screwdriver and pick it up. Hey, I got both at once. Look at that, there's the keepers. There's our two little keepers. Don't lose those guys. You can get more, but you probably don't have them on hand. And if you lose them, <laughs> you have a problem. Um, so we'll just back this off again. There she come. Take all the pressure off. And the easiest thing to do here is actually just take the, take the tool off the head. This doesn't have to be very tight, just, just enough that it's not flopping around. Okay. And the bolts I'm using to hold those down are the same ones that were used for the cam cap. Take this guy off here. Once again, we use our magical screwdriver. There it goes on top of the spring. There's the spring itself. Okay, now if you look down inside there, there's our valve stem seal. That's the little guy that we're trying to change right here. He's sitting on top, oh yeah, there we go. He's sitting on top of, uh, of the valve guide. If you go over here, you can actually see, here's a naked one. This is one, there's the valve guide itself. So our little, our little seal is just kind of pressed on top of that. He's sitting on there like a hat. So these can be a little cranky to get out. Um, they're, they're pushed on there pretty tight. If you're lucky, you just grab and you can pull straight up. And there you go, that came out. I will admit I might've cheated a little bit. That one was loose. You can get them from the sides and sort of wet, push them up a little bit. Be careful you don't scar anything, but you basically just grab that and pull it up. So there's our bad seal. This one's in bad shape now. It's been taken it off a couple of times to show this off, but you've got that out. You've got your valve springs out. So now we're done and we still have pressure in this cylinder. We have rope in the cylinder, something to keep this valve from falling down inside the, uh, inside the cylinder. If that happens, if it does fall down inside and it completely lets go, at that point, you're taking the, uh, taking the head off. So don't do that. It's the hardest part about this job is getting the retainers back in place. They're fiddly little things and you don't have a lot of room to work with. So here's a technique we've come up with that makes it easier. You can either use the extreme pressure sticky grease that came with this, or you can use a little bit of uh, assembly lube. I'm gonna use the grease that came with the kit because it's nice and sticky. What I'm gonna do, and I'll do this when the valve, you know, inside the, uh, inside the head, but I'll just reach in there and put a little bit of grease on the top of the valve stem near the groove. That's where the, uh, that's where the retainers have to go. And that way, when the retainers are dropped in place, I can just stick them to the side of the valve stem seal and they'll hold in place and not fall out while you're looking to uh, compress the spring or release the spring. And that is the, by far the most annoying thing that can happen with this. If you don't do this, you can spend hours messing around. So a little bit of black grease on here. And I said, you can use assembly lube. You can use just about any grease. You can see I've got assembly lube on this guy already. There we go. That's maybe more than I need, but it doesn't really matter. We'll put our spring back in. Make sure you get it sitting on its seat. It should sit pretty much level in there. Spring retainer, or spring retainer. And then you can sort of sit their two keepers in there, but they have a tendency to fall out of place. So I wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend you actually just put them in later. So pop those out again because you can see what happens. They get stuck sideways in there. So we assemble our tool. Screw it down. It doesn't be too tight. We're not putting a lot of pressure on this thing. This just has to be tight enough so it doesn't move around. And then start to compress. And you go. It actually takes a fair bit of compression to expose that groove. Okay. So we've got our spring compressed, and uh, you can see right here, you can see with this, with this red um, grease I put on there, you can see very clearly that's the groove that we need to lock into with our, uh, with our keepers. So I'm gonna take it and stick it in there. There we go, that one's stuck in place. The tool I'm using for this is a pick that's slightly magnetic, just enough to hold up a keeper. 
I'll slide it in there. And this can be a little bit of a rodeo. But there we go. Tap into place, and that's good to go. That's perfect. Now I just back off this tool. Watch yourself. And voila, we're done. So that's that valve is now safe from falling down inside the engine once again. It's now fully assembled. This is fiddly. There is 16 of these. There's 32 of those keepers in an engine. 16 and 16 uh, valves in here. It will take a while to do a full set, but you're not taking the head off, so that's all you're doing. Um, when you're putting your your uh, Lifters back in. Again, if these are if these are getting old and rattly, if you've got hydraulic lifters like this particular head, um, you can get replacements for these. Uh, you may want to change them out. Um, if you're putting the old ones back in, it's good practice to make sure they go back in the same uh, valve they came on came out of. Um, and I think that's more of a that depends on the on the design of the valve train. But the idea is that these can some these can mate themselves to the cam, and it wouldn't hurt when you're putting this back together again. I'll pretend I've done all the rest of these. When you put them back together again, lots of assembly lube on everything. Put some assembly lube on here when this thing starts up because it's going to be starting up dry. A buoy. There we go. It's going to be starting up dry, so make sure you've got lots of assembly lube on anything so it comes in nice and clean. No, no extra, no extra friction the first time we start this up. Do you have any questions that I missed? I think you covered everything. We did have one person ask. Uh, if this video would be available later. We will make this video available later. We're going to put this on the product page. And of course, as always, we take our Facebook Live videos and, um, and put them on YouTube. Uh, if you have questions about this particular process, feel free to ask questions in the comments, either on Facebook or on YouTube. We'll take that part out probably of the, uh, of the product video. But, um, but yes, definitely, this is, this is intended as a reference video so that when you do find yourself having to change out your valve stem seals or your valve springs, you will uh, be able to come back here and see how to use this job, use this tool. Again, this tool is available for, from, from Flying Miata. We've got them on the shelf right now. They uh, $74.99 at the moment, at least, uh, including shipping inside the US. And if you have a Miata that leaks at idle, that leaks on deceleration, on closed throttle, um, if it's blow smoke, I mean, if it, if it leaks oil and blows blue smoke, this is the best way to fix that problem is to change out those, those leaky valve stem seals. So. There we go. Uh, we'll be back next week with some uh, some more tech tips or been talking about some interesting things to do. We might have some computers going on next week to, to show you some, some technology. But in the meantime, uh, everyone, enjoy your week, and we will see you later. This has been Keith Tanner from Fly Me Out.